Okay, this is Algebra 2, Set 84, Solutions of Equations. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about is um, the different degrees of a power. So for the first example, x to the third is a third degree term. x squared ymp, you have to look at the powers of each of the variables and then you add them up. So x squared ymp is a fifth degree term. 47x, it's a first degree term because the x has an invisible one power. Okay, now when we're talking about degree equations, what you do is you look at the highest power um, in the equation. So if we're looking at the first one, um, 3x squared is a second degree equation, 3x to the third is a third degree equation, then we look at xy, it has a 1 and a 1, so we take that 1 and the 1 and we add it and we get 2. So it's a second degree equation, and then the last one, 3x plus 2, is a first degree equation. So why is this important? Well, first degree equations in two or more unknowns are called linear equations, and that's what we're pretty much used to working with so far. So for example, if you see something like this, 3y plus 2x equals 4, it's a linear equation. If you add variables, you can see, or add powers to the variables, you can see that they um, are, it's, sorry, it's a first degree equation. Then if you look at the variables, there are two unknowns. There's an x and a y. So this is called a first degree equation in two unknowns. If we graph something like this, it's always going to be a straight line, a first degree equation in two or more unknowns. Okay, now we are going to talk about systems of equations. Systems of equations always have brackets like this, and then we solve them. There are always three possibilities when you have a system of equations. Okay, you're going to have two lines when, the, when you have two variables. So those lines can either cross, be on top of each other, or be parallel. Okay, so their intersections are going to be either at one point, at infinite points, or all the points, or no points at all. And there are different names for these. The first one is if there's one intersection, it's called consistent. If there's no intersection, it's called inconsistent. And if it's all points, everything overlapping, it is called dependent. Okay, so if you have an equation or two equations that have one solution, it can be solved by graphing or by, solved by substitution or solved by elimination. And you're always going to get x equals something, y equals something. You'll have a solution that will tell you the point that is your solution. If you have something that's dependent, you can solve it by graphing. You can look at the graph and see that it's overlapping. If you solve by substitution or elimination, all your variables will drop out and you'll get a true statement. The statement will look something like 0 equals 0 or 5 equals 5. It will always be true, but it will be a confusing answer. Okay, the third possibility is if it's inconsistent. You can always solve it by graphing. Inconsistent is going to be parallel lines. Um, when you do substitution or elimination, the variables are going to drop out, but this time, instead of getting a true statement, you're going to get a false statement. And it will look like something like 0 is equal to 2, or 5 is equal to negative 7, something equally confusing, but even more confusing because it's not going to be true because 0 does not equal 2. Okay, so we have an example. This example is an equation that you would have. You solve it. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Just bring down 2x minus 4. You can see here that there's a problem. When we subtract 2x from both sides, we end up with negative 4 equals negative 4. Confusing answer because we don't have x equals something. So, But it is true. Negative 4 does equal negative 4. So it's a true statement. So those um, equations are dependent on each other. Okay, another example. 2x minus 2 equals 2x plus 2. You can already see something's kind of wrong. Um, we'll add 2 to both sides. We get 2x equals 2x plus 4. Let's subtract 2x from both sides. 
we get 0 equals 4. Not true. So it's an inconsistent um, solution. Another example, um, if you have these two equations, the first thing we're going to do is we'll multiply everything on the top by 2, and then we're going to get 2y equals 2x minus 4, and then we'll set the next one right under it, 2y equals 2x minus 4. You can already see they match. If you subtract, you get 0 equals 0. True statement, so these two equations are dependent. Okay, another example, 2x plus y equals 2x plus 2, y equals 2x minus 2. Um, we're going to multiply everything on the bottom by negative 1. So we get y equals 2x plus 2 on the top, negative y equals negative 2x plus 2 on the bottom. We end up with 0 equals 4, not true, so it's inconsistent. Okay, now, um, the book goes in to explain um, what happens if you're left with planes, um, where planes can intersect. It's a little bit confusing and not really needed, but um, if you have the three planes that intersect, what you're going to end up with is a single point, and that point is going to have a solution that is named x, y, z, and the x, y, and z will have a value. Okay, this is independent and consistent. Okay, another example of planes that are parallel. Planes that are parallel are called inconsistent. And then you have three planes that intersect and they all intersect along a line. They are not inconsistent, they are not consistent, but have infinite solutions. Don't worry about remembering any of that. I think it was just kind of added information for you. All right, there you go.